This is very much the employment of heaven. The inhabitants of that world would spend much of their time in searching into the great things of divinity, and endeavouring to acquire knowledge in them. As we are told of the angels, 1 Peter 1 verse 12, which things the angels desire to look into. This will be very agreeable to what you hope will be your business to all eternity, as you doubtless hope to join in the same employment with the angels of light. Solomon says, Proverbs 25 verse 2, It is the honour of kings to search out a matter, and certainly above all others to search out divine matters. Now if this be the honour even of kings, is it not equally, if not much more, your honour? 3. This is a pleasant way of improving time. Knowledge is pleasant and delightful to intelligent creatures, and, above all, the knowledge of divine things. For in them are the most excellent truths, and the most beautiful and amiable objects held forth to view. However tedious the labour necessarily attending this business may be, yet the knowledge once obtained will richly requite the pains taken to obtain it. Quote, when wisdom entereth the heart, knowledge is pleasant to the soul. Close quote. Proverbs 2 verse 10. 4. This knowledge is exceeding useful in Christian practice. Such as have much knowledge in divinity have great means and advantages for spiritual and saving knowledge. For no means of grace, as was said before, have their effect on the heart otherwise than by the knowledge they impart. The more you have of a rational knowledge of the things of the gospel, the more opportunity will there be, when the Spirit shall be breathed into your heart, to see the excellency of these things, and to taste the sweetness of them. The heathens who have no rational knowledge of the things of the gospel, have no opportunity to see the excellency of them, and therefore the more rational knowledge of these things you have, the more opportunity and advantage you have to see the divine excellency and the glory of them. Again, the more knowledge you have of divine things, the better will you know your duty. Your knowledge will be of great use to direct you as to your duty in particular cases. You will also be the better furnished against the temptations of the devil, for the devil often takes the advantage of person's ignorance to ply them with temptations which otherwise would have no hold of them. By having much knowledge, you will be under greater advantages to conduct yourselves with prudence and discretion in your Christian course, and so to live much more to the honour of God and religion. Many who mean well, and are full of a good spirit, yet for want of prudence, conduct themselves so as to wound religion. Many have a zeal of God, which doth more hurt than good, because it is not according to knowledge. Romans 10 verse 2 the reason why many good men behave no better in many instances is not so much that they want grace as that they want knowledge. Besides, an increase of knowledge would be of great help to profitable conversation. It would supply you with matter for conversation when you come together or when you visit your neighbours, and so you would have less temptation to spend the time in such conversation as tends to your own and others' hurt. 5. Consider the advantages you are under to grow in the knowledge of divinity. We are under far greater advantages to gain much knowledge in divinity now than God's people under the Old Testament, both because the canon of Scripture is so much more enlarged since that time, and also because evangelical truths are now so much more plainly revealed, so that common men are now, in some respects, under advantages to know more of divinity than the greatest prophets were then. Thus that saying of Christ is, in a sense, applicable to us. Luke 10, verses 23 and 24. Blessed are the eyes which see the things which ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear the things which ye hear, and have not heard them. We are in some respects under far greater advantages for gaining knowledge, now in these latter ages of the church, than Christians were formerly, especially by reason of the art of printing, of which God hath given us the benefit, whereby Bibles and other books of divinity are exceedingly multiplied, and persons may now be furnished with helps for the obtaining of Christian knowledge, at a much easier and cheaper rate than they formerly could. 6. We know not what opposition we may meet with in the principles which we hold in divinity. 
we know that there are many adversaries to the gospel and its truths. If therefore we embrace those truths, we must expect to be attacked by the said adversaries, and unless we be well informed concerning divine things, how shall we be able to defend ourselves? Besides, the Apostle Peter enjoins it upon us always to be ready to give an answer to every man who asketh us a reason of the hope that is in us. But this we cannot expect to do without a considerable knowledge in divine things. I shall now conclude my discourse with some directions for the acquisition of this knowledge. 1. Be assiduous in reading the Holy Scriptures. This is the fountain whence all knowledge in divinity must be derived. Therefore let not this treasure lie by you neglected. Every man of common understanding who can read may, if he please, become well acquainted with the Scriptures, and what an excellent attainment would this be. 2. Content not yourselves with only a cursory reading without regarding the sense. This is an ill way of reading, to which, however, many accustom themselves all their days. When you read, observe what you read. Observe how things come in. Take notice of the drift of the discourse and compare one scripture with another. For the scripture, by the harmony of the different parts of it, casts great light upon itself. We are expressly directed by Christ to search the scriptures, which evidently intend something more than a mere cursory reading and use means to find out the meaning of the scripture. When you have it explained in the preaching of the word, take notes of it, and if at any time a scripture that you did not understand be cleared up to your satisfaction, mark it, lay it up, and if possible, remember it. 3. Procure and diligently use other books which may help you to grow in this knowledge. There are many excellent books extant which might greatly forward you in this knowledge, and afford you a very profitable and pleasant entertainment in your leisure hours. There is doubtless a great defect in many, that through a lothness to be at a little expense, they furnish themselves with no more helps of this nature. They have a few books, indeed, which now and then on Sabbath days they read, but they have had them so long, and read them so often, that they are weary of them, and it has now become a dull story, a mere task to read them. 4. Improve conversation with others to this end. How much might persons promote each other's knowledge in divine things if they would improve conversation as they might? If men that are ignorant were not ashamed to show their ignorance, and were willing to learn of others? If those that have knowledge would communicate it without pride and ostentation, and if all were more disposed to enter on such conversation as would be for their mutual edification and instruction? 5. Seek not to grow in knowledge chiefly for the sake of applause, and to enable you to dispute with others, but seek it for the benefit of your souls, and in order to practice. If applause be your end, you will not be so likely to be led to the knowledge of the truth, but may justly, as often is the case of those who are proud of their knowledge, be led into error to your own perdition. This being your end, if you should obtain much rational knowledge, it would not be likely to be of any benefit to you but would puff you up with pride. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 1 Knowledge puffeth up. 6. Seek to God that he would direct you and bless you in this pursuit after knowledge. This is the Apostle's direction. James 1 verse 5 If any man lack wisdom, let him ask it of God, who giveth to all liberally, and upbraideth not. God is the fountain of all divine knowledge. Proverbs 2 verse 6, The Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Labour to be sensible of your own blindness and ignorance, and your need of the help of God, lest you be led into error instead of true knowledge. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 18, If any man would be wise, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. 8. Practice according to what knowledge you have. This will be the way to know more. The psalmist warmly recommends this way of seeking knowledge and divinity from his own experience. Psalm 119, verse 100. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. Christ also recommends the same. John 7, verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, 
whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself.